Today we're here with Nicole Brewster from Renfrew. We're following up. She's at PDAC, which is the prospecting mining event in Canada. Uh, I think I think uh, Glenn told us 50,000 people are showing up. Nicole? I heard 41,000, which the last pre-COVID one, the highest number I heard pre-COVID, because I did that one as we locked down. I was here. Oh, wow. And uh, it used to be in March, right? That's true. June is bizarre. Um the attendance that year was 26,000. So that's what COVID has done to the PDAC, which is the premier mining convention slash trade show in the world. So Nicole, um, it's a good, interesting fact. My question for you is, you've been to many of these. Why are there not many young investors? As I was walking through, I see a, a lot of gray hair. And, and no offense, man. No offense, man. But, Stress, it's but, it's but why are there gray. many young investors? It's funny. I, I just, the sex appeal of mining is probably non existent. But the reality is, you know, our world, you mine it or you grow it. Everything on our planet. Take an inventory of your outfit today, Monsieur. Yeah, that's Everything true. Everything you wear is either mined or grown. And I think it's just a fundamental, um, a fundamental disconnect. However, okay, I have two thoughts. The first is somebody told me. That the mining industry needs to take a page out of the milk industry in Canada, for example. You don't have to watch TV long in Canada before you come on a commercial or That's a free true. calendar for Canadian Milk Association. They do a great job of promoting themselves. Every Canadian is aware of the fact that we have cows in this country and we make milk. Right? That's true. Probably not aware of how much of a mining powerhouse this country is, though. It is. I was surprised to see all the countries that are actually here looking for Canadian involvement in their countries. You know, we're like hockey. How many, how, how many hockey leagues around the world are populated by Canadians? Best geologists in the world, it's well known. Best geologists in the world are coming out of Canada. You go around the world, mining projects are populated by Canadians. Freaking French Canadian drillers? Let me tell you, there's no holds barred. Those guys are magical. So, you know, little known fact. But what's the other thing? The other thing is we're seeing the destruction of capital in Bitcoin and in the major markets right now. Earnings will are and will continue to disappoint, and money, smart money, will look for the the place it can make the most return. It'll look for the most distressed sector, the sector that has performed the worst, and that's mining. I mean, mining cyclical. We're now on a chart basis. We're approaching, or arguably, in the beginning of a bull market in mining. Yeah, we and have been. That is coupled with the fact that we're in the midst of our own industrial revolution, the switch to energy storage, EVs, you know, battery storage in general. And coupled with, at the same time, a decline in commodities coming online because about 10 years ago, the mining at the top of the last mining cycle, the, the, the smart boys did lots of dumb deals, spent too much money, had to cut their spending, they all cut their exploration. A mine takes about 10 years to come online. That's true. There's nothing coming online. You look past, at the most, 2025, and there's nothing coming online. All the production falls off a cliff. That's if true. If the production falls off a cliff and you still need the metal, what does that do to the price of the metal? It goes up. It goes up the other side of that cliff. So, you know, we're, we're headed into possibly the perfect storm. I would tend to agree. Now... So what does that mean to investors is your next question. What does that mean to young investors? Okay, gold buy an ounce of gold. Today, an ounce of gold would cost you what? $1,840, give or take yeah, Canadian? Yeah, give or take, yeah. For an ounce of gold. Well, that's nice. Now, maybe you wear your ounce of gold, but that's a lot of money. So you're going to buy a gram? Well, mathematics comes into play and leverage. You have one ounce of gold to make a profit on it. You know, gold needs to go to $3,000, which is... I'm not going to get into the, the theories on where's gold going, but what I can tell you is if you buy a mining stock at five cents for your $1,800 that you spend on your one ounce of gold, spend $1,800 on any junior gold miner with reasonable assets, you get far more shares, and it's an exponential gain. Yeah, if it is. The stock goes from five cents to eight cents, which the world of junior mining is not a big deal. Your return is exponentially much bigger than it was on your one ounce of gold. To get the same return, your one ounce of gold would have to move a lot. So equities 
are the every man's way to participate in the coming commodity super cycle. I would tend to agree, and especially in the fact that we need all these strategic metals. The governments are mobilizing themselves to actually look at these metals. I U.S. government's writing checks, our own government's selectively writing checks. Protectionism is the way the world is going. We are not going to be sharing metals freely across borders. U.S. needs everything. We have a free trade agreement in place. In fact, the U.S. mandated spending on critical and strategic metals, they did. which I think identified 24. Uh, though m that money can be spent in Canada, I found out, because it ensures their supply chain, because apparently we're just another state. Anyway, I, we're not going into the politics here. But suffice to say, an easy way to participate in this coming cycle is in junior mining equities. It's the, you know, it's the Wild West. Picture Clint Eastwood fixing his hat and saying, come yep. on, partner, buy some stock. But it's the place where outsized returns. And, and what I personally like about the mining sector is that when you're invecti investing in a small cap company, as against, let's say, against investing in the commodity, if the market goes against you, you have time to step away. Correct. I, but if you're investing in the commodity, if the market falls off, it hurts. Right. So I, I, like, I like the fact that I can see that trend kind of hit me and I can actually tactically figure out if I want to step away or I just don't mind, it'll come back. Well, or if you even, you know, you're, you're also looking at your risk profile. I would say as a harsh, broad generalization, in the junior mining space, your risk is virtually eliminated at this point. Like, as you know myself, I run a junior mining company. We have assets that on a valuation basis far exceed our market capital, market capitalization. So you would say the market's dictating the value of the assets. But no, there's real metal in the ground with real value. Stock trades at five cents. So what's your risk? It's five cents. So you're not you're <coughs> not buying Bitcoin, which is trading at thirty thousand dollars and hoping for oh, the best. Oh, it, it fell down. It's now twenty four thousand. It tells you how much attention I pay to that. But okay, you're not spending twenty four thousand dollars on Bitcoin, which sure it could go to the moon or it could go to the seal the seller. But you're going to buy like what one one thousandth of a bitcoin anyway so you're yeah. not you've not got leverage on your side so for the young investors generally speaking if you're under 40 you have more disposable income than most of the population you're, you're approaching your maximum earning years you're possibly not paying a mortgage yet possibly don't have kids so you're you're you've got some flexibility in your income and go where you can get the best returns don't buy a bank stock, which if it goes up 10%, great. Your, your $1 you spent is now worth $1.10. That's true. Buy, a, buy, pick some mining stocks. Do your due diligence. You're in the Wild West. You're playing in the shallow end, but there are still sharks in the shallow end. So do your due diligence and pick a basket. It's yeah. like bet on the whole race card. Find 10 horses, put a little bit of money on each one. And if one of them takes ahead of the pack, maybe you cut your losses from the other and you pile on the one horse. Who knows? I'm not a licensed broker. But this is the part of the market where you get outsized gains. This is the part of the market where fortunes are made and legends are told, right? So I, I like that answer. And on that, I, like I always say, guys, there's always discounts. And if you heard what Nicole said, there may be a discount there. But... I'm not a financial, not a financial advisor. Take it for what it is. Thank you, Nicole. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Hope that helps. Good it does help. Everyone. It does help. Thank you, Nicole.